Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I received my P500 copy of For the People, the 25th anniversary deluxe edition. This game uh, obviously came out many, many years ago, designed by Mark Herman, and it is a card-driven game, and it was one of the first few card-driven games uh, designed and published by GMT Games. So, don't know if you don't know, card-driven games use cards to initiate the action. Usually, they have events that can happen, or you use ops points to take actions, moving units, building units, attacking, etc. So, this game, um, you can see Abraham Lincoln on the front, obviously covers the American Civil War. Huge box, by the way. I know initially or originally it came in a two-inch box, but this one is uh, the big three-inch box. You've got really nice box art, by the way. I, I know it's abstract, uh, but I really, really enjoy it. You've got Lincoln on the front. Obviously, you have my namesake, Ulysses S. U.S. Grant, on that spine. And then you have William Tecumseh Sherman there. Always cool. Uh, here's a look at the back of the box. You can see some of the counters, the board. It's huge. It's new. So this edition of the game obviously incorporated all the errata, but also redesigned the artwork of the map or board and the cover of the, uh, uh, the box itself. So uh, one to two player game, I think you can play it two handed. I'm not sure whether it has a solitaire bot or a solitaire mode. Not really seeing that, but uh, not complex, five on the 10 scale. So yeah, let's go ahead and without a further ado. And the interesting thing is if you have an addition, a previous edition of this game, you can just order the, th the three inch box with the mounted map board. So that's kind of a cool option. I think when I first initially pre-ordered pre 500 them, hundreded them, can't speak today. Um, I think I, I ordered both this and the box in the mounted map board because I didn't think it came together, but it, uh, it definitely does. So first thing you see here is the rule book. I don't think they did anything to the art or the layout of the rule book. But you can see For the People, the American Civil War, 1861 to 1865, Grant and Lee, and then the uh, soldiers there. Pretty big rule book, but if you've played card-driven games, th th this is going to be a game you're going to pick up. There's just some nuances uh, that you're going to have to learn. The rule book is 48 pages right there. There is a huge index on the back so that you can look up the different aspects and actual rules, because that's designer notes for this uh, second edition of the game, which actually blows me away. Surely that can't be correct. But anyway, some designer notes. So the rules are actually 46 pages. So yes, this is a fairly dense and thick rule book. Uh, some of these are scenarios. Some of these pages are just so you can, eight, eight, you can see 1861 scenario, 63. Uh, and 64. But yeah, typical GMT games, rule book, case uh, information help you know where to go. But yeah, pretty pretty dense rule book. Going to start reading this because I definitely want to play this. I bought this one because one, I enjoy Herman Mark Herman's games and two, card driven games are fun and I've never played this one. Embarrassing, embarrassingly enough. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I that I bought it. I wanted to definitely give it a play. Uh, here are a couple of charts and tables. It has the sequence of play on it, state control values, strategic will summary. That's a part of the game. You have your CRT here, your DRMs, dice roll modifiers, running the guns, general casualties, river codes, just to identify the different rivers, movement and then reinforcement uh, summary and schedules yeah good two play aids here is a list of all of the strategy cards and you can see there the white ones are the neutral both and then blue is union and the butternut is the uh 
Confederates. So there you have them all laid out. They don't necessarily describe them, but they do give uh, the card number. And then here is a look at setup, probably for 1861 uh, scenario, quick setup. So that's always nice. The map is point to point. You're familiar with that if you've played a lot of card-driven games. Washington's War was that, etc. Uh, some of these counters fell out here. But one and a half counter sheets. Obviously, this half counter sheet is mostly control markers and destroyed markers. Nice looking uh, counters. And then here's a bunch of these that have fallen off. These are units and some markers as well. But you've got your strength points, your union strength points, ones, threes, and fives, your confederate, one, threes, and fives, all your different leaders, uh, as well as um, not, not necessarily the headquarter markers, but the identifiers for the different armies that are involved, both confederate and uh, union. And then you've got special, these are probably garrison units, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Your admin markers, some of your forts, your fortifications, and then these are probably victory point areas. Strategic will, that's what we saw on that marker. That's one of the concepts of the game. You can ultimately win a victory by driving the other player's strategic will, will down. We haven't gotten to the uh, cards yet. We will here in a moment, but I wanted to show you this beautiful uh, double-sided mounted map. Here. And I'm going to go ahead and lay out. This is the new version, the updated version. And you can see it's huge. I've got to uh, lay some heavy games on it. It needs to be flattened out, but that won't be a won't be a problem. Boy, this is just really really nice. Very well laid out. I, I love, I always love looking on any Civil War map, looking for some of the cities that I've lived in, uh, in Illinois and Indiana. Obviously, I, I went to college in uh, Bloomington. Here's Indianapolis. Vernon was just south. It's called North Vernon, just south of my hometown. Uh, and, and then I actually lived in south central Illinois, Salem, Vandalia, I live just south of there in a place called Centralia. Lots of Union troops went down that going to the Trans-Mississippi Theater. But yeah, point to point. Now I'm going to flip it over because if you really so choose, you can choose to use the classic version of the game board. Still a nice looking game board, uh, just not as nice as the upgraded but yeah, you get. A, I think that's cool that you. It's double sided, and you can choose which one you want to play. I'm sure that there's some that are nostalgic and, and are going to want to just use the one they've always used when they played it in the past. Uh, as a card driven game, there are four different decks of cards. Here you can see uh, all of those. Don't necessarily need to open every single one of those, but I am going to at least open one so I can show you some of the cards. And these are the old fashioned card driven game layout for games like Wilderness War, Washington's War. They all kind of use this same style and layout. And nowadays I feel like it's much, much better. Uh, but here you've got, you know, the name of the card, and then you have the ops value in the upper left. You've also got a number and then the text about what that event is. So if this is, if you're playing the Confederates and you hold this card, you can either play it for the two ops. Let's say you needed to build a unit or move a unit, or you could take it for the event. And here you go. These are both aligned cards. You've got the slash mark there with the gray and the blue. Kansas admitted to the Union, West, Western Virginia, food shortage, pro-Union secessionist in Tennessee. You can see the op values typically are one th through three uh, on these games. But yeah, you, you can see you've got four whole maps of these. And I'm trying to determine if they are associated with 
based on the numbers, I mean, here's the one that starts at one, and then this deck has 101. So obviously this is the first deck. You're probably gonna play through this in the early game, and then that's the late game. This is the middle, uh, middle and the two middle decks, and then the late, uh, the late game. But lots of cards there. You've got your big dice one. You've got a thing of baggies. Uh, not a, a whole lot in the game. It, it has a three-inch box because I think with the old two-inch boxes, once you open them up and then had to lay out all the cards, you, you would be uh, you just wouldn't have the room needed. But yeah, really nice looking game. Very much looking forward to this. I love card-driven games. There's no, uh, I, I don't think there's a secret about that. I've never made uh, any comment that that's not, I love card-driven games. They're just very, very fun and interesting and really incorporate a lot of the elements of the history. I think that's their main strength. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, a very quick unboxing of For the People, 25th Anniversary Deluxe Edition by designed by Mark Herman from GMT Games. Very much looking forward to playing this. We're going to get this played hopefully this year, uh, maybe a couple of times. It is a longer game. Uh, if you look on the back, does it give a play time? Nope, I don't see it. But my guess is this is a three-hour game, uh, if not longer. So there you have it for the people. I do appreciate you watching. I, I appreciate uh, getting this uh, new copy of the game, and I'm very much excited to give it a go. So... Thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.